Hi, everyone. Welcome to my home office studio here in the mountains of Washington, the Olympic Mountains. I'm Rachel Chase, and I am really excited about this particular class today. I'll tell you why I'm extra excited in a moment. Uh, but welcome, welcome. This, this uh, class I'm about to lead you is in service to the Atlantic Center for the Arts mission to provide programming to the community to support arts and wellness. And I'm an arts and wellness ambassador for the Atlantic Center for the Arts, and I am so grateful to be with you all today. I'm going to be sharing about 45 minutes to an hour here uh, class for you that is all about helping you feel more creatively alive, inspired, calm, and really to support your emotional expression. And we're going to do this in a specific way today, inspired by the art of, I think I'm going to dare say my very favorite artist of all time, Georgia O'Keeffe. And I'll share a little bit about who she was, what kind of art she created. And what we're going to do today is really just a process of exploration, exploring her art, but also exploring through art making, how we can perhaps play around with her style, how she created art, while also bringing out our own style of emoting, sharing our emotions through the visual aspect of art using some different mediums. So um, I've got a few supply list options for you today. Uh, you'll want to have, if you have any oil pastels, that would be awesome or crayons would work too. If you don't have oil pastels or even charcoal would work as well. Regular chalk could work for that too. So if that's what you have on hand, grab that. I've also got, I mean, I, I've got a, a ton of art supplies. So, you know, don't compare your supply list to mine because I'm kind of an art supply hoarder over the years, I have to admit. Um, but I'm, I've got some actual pieces of, of, of black and different gray shades of gray charcoal. Um, you might want to get out some pencils. We're going to play with some shading as shading relates to expressing our own shades of emotion and how you know, personally for me, what art has been about in my life, um, it's been a, a healing force in my life. It really has. Um, and ever since I was a little girl, just playing with art has felt soothing to my soul. It's very cathartic, a great way to release emotions and also a great way to express something that you might be having a hard time expressing. So for me, there were there was a lot of feelings of maybe not knowing what words to use to express myself, but I, I still felt like I needed to get it out. And that is what art is for, right? To help us express something that maybe um, has no words, or maybe when you gaze upon it, it gives you a sense of a feeling of what was what that artist was feeling when they made it, to make a connection, to convey something, right? And today, this is not about a perfect outcome. We're not going to try to emulate Georgia O'Keeffe's exact art and make something just like hers per se, but we're going to use her art as inspiration for our own process today. So, um, we've got the oil pastels, we've got some charcoals, pencils perhaps, and I'm, I'm also, if we make it that far today, and I think we will, we might even do a third thing with some paints. And I've got some watercolors. I like to use watercolor when I'm doing process painting because it's very free flowing and forgiving that way. So, but if you wanna use acrylics or another form of, of medium, you go right ahead and use whatever you've got on hand that you like to use or that you're interested in playing with that you don't use very much to see how courageous you're feeling today. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So um, those those are the things you'll you'll need. Maybe a pad of paper. I've got my easel set up here, and I'll just kind of tilt the camera a little so you can see. I've just got a little small easel set up with my uh, paper there, and um, but you know you can just have yours flat on the table or on the floor, even you know wh wherever's comfortable comfortable for you to create. Sometimes I, I just like to get it on the floor and move my body around and 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 move some move some uh, paint or draw you know because it is it's very physical it's very useful that way another thing to grab so you'll maybe want to pause this and and go outside and come back but you know one of the the core things that i love about atlantic center for the arts that's inspired me so greatly over the years is its mission to connect the natural world with to bring the artists into the natural world to be inspired by nature. And so um, we're going to be inspired by nature in our art today, just like Georgia O'Keeffe was. She created a lot of art when she was living in the city that expressed her feelings and expressed the lines and the shapes and the tones and the abstract colors the various shades of color and shades of gray and black and white in the city and then she was very inspired by a very special place out in taos new mexico called ghost ranch and when she would go to ghost ranch she would produce these epic beautiful paintings and i'm going to do a little slideshow for you i've got a book to share with you too a little show and tell of her work um there's a, a book comparing her work with one of her um, other contemporaries of the time, Dove. So we'll look at that a little bit, but really it was nature that called her to paint her best work ever. All her great works that were so famous, the flowers and, and the skulls and all that. So I've gone out here and of course I'm in the Olympics, which this is the evergreen state, right? So we've got all this wood that washes up in the rivers here. And I just love this piece. Isn't this neat? Isn't this beautiful? This, look at that, the, the shape, the form, the lines, the driftwood up here in these lakes and rivers is just amazing. Gets tumbled and tumbled and tumbled. Just imagine all that movement. So I'm gonna bring in some nature for us. I've also got some leaves. So go outside. And just get a couple things that you see out in your world and then come back because we're going to use nature and maybe you just want to maybe not get anything from outside but you just want to look out the window while you create and you maybe you have a good view and you can play around with the shapes and colors that you see and connect with the feeling that you have as you gaze upon nature isn't that interesting the feeling that we have when we look at when i look at this leaf you know it's it's fall here right? it's october we have this this is the most rain of the year that happens here which is so wild because not we're just coming out of a drought and suddenly all this rain and that whole story to me is here in this in this leaf coming out of the drought, getting the rain, because it's still damp. It's raining out right now. So we're just gonna bring in a little bit of mindfulness practice to, to really feel into our own emotions, our senses, and our connection with nature. Had to bring in some of that green. Of course, this is tells the story of the drought, doesn't it? And then the rains come. So we'll see. We'll see how that plays out when we play around with textures and line. And I'll take you through this journey today of just playing. Just consider this an hour of play and enjoyment of feeling when you can just kind of let everything else go <laughs> that's going on in your life right now and be here with yourself, with me, or with friends or family watching this video, enjoying a time of creation.
So go ahead and get your supplies together and then we'll start our journey of creation today. Okay. All right, so I always like to start with some centering and being in the body and taking a few breaths. And, you know, in terms of mental health, I'm a mental health coach and I'm an expressive arts facilitator because for me, art has been a healing salve in my life that has helped me greatly overcome suffering and emotional angst. <laughs> so that's why I do this work. So come on this journey with me and enjoy this process. Close your eyes, sit comfortably, and begin to breathe. Feel yourself breathing. Notice how it feels to breathe. And while you're doing this, I want you to relax your body as best as you can. Maybe even feeling your feet on the ground. Let your breath calm you down. Calm you, just calm, just to bring calm. To settle the system a little bit, your body system. And when we settle the body, it automatically starts to settle the mind. Your energy, your mental energy, your emotional energy starts to be more connected inside of you rather than pulled in different directions. So just begin to notice here for a moment how you're feeling right now. and what perhaps you've been connecting with today in your life. Just a little bit of self-reflection to bring us present here before we do our art explorations. And a big sigh is always nice. <sighs> a big soothing sigh. <sighs> Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> it always makes me feel better to sigh. <laughs> All right, so you've got your supplies, maybe even some tea or water. I've got my tea here. Mm, keeps me warm. Ah, it's a little bit chilly outside. All right, let's, uh, let's be inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe, shall we? I'm going to do a little bit of a screen share here just to take you through just a few slides just to kind of see who she was and just talk a little bit about what a neat individual she was look at that let's go back to this one for a moment here so oh well okay i guess my little slideshow just wants to do what it wants to do well there she is it's going to take you through yep that's out in New Mexico, obviously. Here she was, a little bit younger. I'm gonna pause this here. I think it'll let me pause it. I have things in my head that are not like what anyone has taught me. Shapes and ideas so near to me, so natural to my way of being and thinking that it hasn't occurred to me to put them down. Isn't that a wonderful quote. Maybe just touching in with that for yourself, you know, ideas and shapes. Imagine that. The, the, the possibility that within you, you know, I like to think of this as our inner landscape, our psyche, we call it, right? Or our soul. Expressions from within ourselves that that are no one else's but our own, that are yours, your expressions, your soul expressions, yourself, these inner shapes and ideas that are only yours, the inner shapes and ideas that are only mine. 
And I love that she says it hasn't occurred to me to put them down. That is wonderful inspiration for all of us, isn't it? Yeah, she has a fierceness about her, doesn't she? Art is not what you see, it is what you make others see. Now that's an interesting thought. Now this is from an artist who you know, she was a professional artist and a lot of us here are not necessarily professional artists, nor are we trying to be, but we, we're interested in art and we want to use it to express ourselves creatively, to just enhance our creative life because it's important to us, right? Well, it was so important to her that she wanted to be sure that she was making other people see something in a different way than maybe they were used to. And a lot of people judged her artwork as being um, taboo in a lot of ways when really she even talks about how her art is really just trying to help people connect with something deeper within themselves and express the unknown. And I think that's pretty amazing. That reminds me of Carl Jung. And there she is with her, her famous skulls. She, she loved the skulls. I love this quote too, I wanted to share. I found I could say things with color and shapes that I couldn't say any other way, things I had no words for. You know, sometimes people say, God, I just feel so stupid. I don't, I don't really have the words to describe how I feel, but you know, I find that's pretty common actually, that we have an inner language that isn't always decipherable with our limited <laughs> English language. Frankly, it's richer. There's something deeper going on inside of us. So I want us to really access that today and put it into our process today. So we're going to bring up some specific emotions. And there she is just looking at you. She's just looking. Ah. Uh, Boy, that's, that's, that's New Mexico there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you've seen that one already. I love this one because it's, it's so neat to see the art in the landscape that it's inspired by. I love that. This is what I'm talking about today. Let's bring our art and our inner landscape and our natural world together through feeling. We don't have to create an exact image. This is very abstract, very whatever comes through, you know? And that's why I wanted to bring her in today because that's what she did. She brought the natural world and made it more abstract for us so that we could have a sense of more how it feels rather than any sense that we need to make something perfect like a picture. So just a little more inspiration for you. I thought I'd do one more, um, one more screen share of something that I painted a while back that was inspired by her work. So I'll just show you a few pictures just to kind of give you a little idea of some evolution of her work. Because in the beginning, she was really doing a lot of kind of um, exploring of, of like just general shapes and forms. Um, these are all Georgia O'Keeffe explorations here. Let me make sure I've got my screen so you can see here. Yeah, these are all her explorations and we could just play around with this type of stuff today. You know, some, some general colors and shapes. There's a body form, there's another body form. So she's really just bringing us, she's known as the mother of modernism, okay? So she was really interested in bringing us into the, the, just the shape, the line, the form of things. She had her eye on the, the natural world, but she also had it with a, a sense of deep feeling. Now, this is one of my favorites. I used to have this as a poster board on my wall. Green and blue music, it's called. Isn't that neat? It's so hard. doesn't even do it justice, does it? Just think of that. It's like you've got the painting. They took a picture of it. They put it in a book, and now I'm trying to show it to you through a video. 
<laughs> but you get a little bit of the feeling at least. You get an idea of look at that emotion. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Got these two areas with like the jagged and this slice of light in here, and then this sort of like internal muddiness uh, feeling of being inside somewhere with some outside forces at play here. Yeah, I mean, I could probably just show you Georgia O'Keefe for the whole hour. <laughs> right? Look at that. Look at that abstract with the desert. And this is deep inside the flower. Look at that. She sure mm, pulls, pulls you in, doesn't she? At least she does for me. She really pulls me in. And then these are the city, city abstract city, cityscapes. Isn't that neat? She really captures form and composition in a, just a brilliant way. I think there's a couple more I wanted to show you here. I, this was an exhibit I saw several years ago, um, Massachusetts. That's when I bought this book. So this one here, I had a, I photocopied it and put it up in my room when I was making this other painting that a client had asked me to do years ago. He wanted it to be very vibrant and colorful because he had just done a trip, I believe. Oh, gosh, I want to say Brazil. And uh, he wanted me to do it with all these colors. And so here we go. So I kind of thought, all right, let me let me get some some inspiration from George O'Keefe here. And. All right. And let's see, I'm trying to pull up a picture of this other painting for you real quick. Here we go. All right. We'll try it one more time. Yeah, there it is. So this is what I ended up doing. This was three feet uh, uh, four feet wide by three feet high. And, uh, it's got a lot going on, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So this is what I did as a commission for this person who wanted a lot of vibrant, vibrant colors. And he said, whatever style I wanted to do it in. And so I said, any style. Okay. So I kind of did, you can see the modeling here with this streak here that I used. So, you know, this is this is how we artists do sometimes when we're we're wanting to make something in an emulative way to emulate another artist. But, you know, today we can simply be inspired by her work, inspired by those shapes, those forms, those expressive qualities that she showed us was possible to express ourselves in a deeper, more meaningful way and not just copy something, right? Um, that's what she was interested in. And that inspired me greatly. So why don't we just kind of take all that in for a moment, take a little breath, Hmm. Recenter a little bit. And just gaze upon our fresh, clean piece of paper or canvas. And we're going to start by just exploring shapes. We're going to we're going to do a few things. So if you're using a canvas, that's great. But I'm going to say just give you a heads up. This is what I'd like to um, attempt for you to do today to see to see if we can just explore this per, this little process which is three it's going to be three steps i'm just getting my easel ready here it's going to be three steps the first step is just playing around with shape and line with pencil or charcoal the second step i'm then to flip my page and get a new piece of paper and start to use the color that's where your crayons or your oil pastels will come in so you can either do it all on one thing or do three separate pieces. I'm going to do three separate pieces and I'm going to invite you to do three 
separate pieces with me. So that's three pieces of paper or two pieces of paper and a canvas. So that the third thing you do, if you want to have um, create a painting on a canvas, is that third thing. So we're going to start with paper if you're using canvas. Hope that's not too confusing. I am just going to use paper. The first thing I'm going to make is an exploration with the charcoal and the pencil. The second thing I'm going to make is the exploration with the pastels. And that gets us all nice and warmed up. So then when we get out our paints, we can kind of echo or take the best of that or explore deeper in another way with the, with a particular texture we, we want to explore or a particular shape or a particular mood. Okay. So the, that's the goal is to have three separate things, or you can put it all together and just have one thing with charcoal and, and oil pastels and paint all in there if you want. Like, go for it. Whatever you want to do, there's no wrong way to make art. Okay. Now, we're going to start, but just bear with me here. I, I want to get us in the mood. The idea of expressive arts is to express something authentic that's present in the moment. So we're not trying to copy Georgia O'Keeffe. We're just inspired by how she was able to bring shape and form and color together to express an inner state of being. Now I'm looking at my paper, so I want you to do that too. I want you to look at your blank piece of paper. And I want you to notice what you're feeling right now. We'll get into the, uh, the, the nature pieces in a bit, unless you're feeling like you just really want to work with your nature pieces now. It's up to you. But right now, I just want us to kind of feel into what we're feeling. And we are simply going to start making marks on the paper that come straight through from that feeling. Okay. So whatever emotion that has been the dominant emotion for you today or something that's coming up right now, maybe even close your eyes for the, for, the, for a moment and just access what you're feeling inside or where you're feeling it. Maybe it's more about a location than, than anything. And then I want you just to open your eyes and just start to make a shape, start to make a mark. This is not about perfection. This is not about getting anything right. This is not about, oh, that's not what I meant. Oh, no. This is just whatever comes out, comes out. And then I want you to take another breath and see what the next thing is that wants to come. Just let that flow through. Just let it come through right out onto the paper. And then keep going with it. Maybe you see a relationship you want to make with another shape with those shapes that feels right. Maybe you start thinking of a memory or, you know, right now, the weather, what's the weather like outside? Bring in the weather. This is all about the present moment, how you're feeling now. What's happening now? Maybe there's some shapes in your space that you can start to bring in. So you're telling a story of now with the marks on your paper. Right now, what you see, what you feel, just very abstract, just general shapes, general lines, general forms. Maybe you want to fill in something that really means a lot to you. That maybe that initial emotion, you want that to stand out. Bring a little more emphasis, add a little more to it. Make it pop by adding some more line to it. Or you know, if you're feeling agitated, make your lines more agitated. If you're feeling 
something else, make your lines kind of explore that feeling. And then think about the outdoors. What's it like outside right now? What are the, what's the landscape like? What's the general tone coming into your mind from the space around you? Just exploring with some black and white or pencils or charcoals. Not really needing to bring any color in just yet. Maybe there's some words you want to write on it. Even add some words. I know Georgia O'Keefe didn't have words in hers, but that doesn't mean yours doesn't can't. <laughs> yours can if it, if you want to. Yeah. Maybe that gives you another idea. You can play around with that for a minute. Just thought about your place, your space, your the story of your space and place inside of you and the environment. So this is about the relationship between emotions and your surroundings. Okay, let's just take another minute here with this exploration. Actually, I have even a little bit of white I'm gonna add in here. So this is just black, white, and gray right now. Just playing around with it. Playing around black, white, and gray, just like Georgia did in the beginning. She was just exploring. This is how you get to know your medium, your media, the thing that you're working with, your, your drawing implements, your paper, your canvas, the texture. You're starting to communicate with your hands, the eye, the inner feeling. And then whatever wants to come next, you're going to just let whatever wants to come next happen without the need to control it or think hard about what to do next. Whatever wants to happen next, just roll with it. Maybe a rhythm starts to happen naturally. Maybe your marks start to take on a different shape than they did in the beginning. Maybe something surprising happens. Okay. All right. So wrap that exercise up for now. Just take a breath. Maybe you're still wrapping it up. That's fine. Here's what came through for me today. Well, that makes sense. I'm in an A-frame. There's mountains outside. This is sort of the feeling I started with, was something down in my body here, something down inside. And then something kind of brought me up. And this is, you know, this elevated feeling of being here in this space. It's very elevating. And it's also very grounding here. There's rain and wind going on outside. They say that there's going to be a big, a big windy storm coming. We haven't seen the wind yet, but maybe the wind will come tonight. Just like life, right? Just like our internal landscape, our internal selves, this, the inner winds, the inner storms. We can't always pre predict them, can we? You know, the weathermen, they like to tell us what's happening and then maybe something else happens. It's just like inside of ourselves. We 
sometimes surprise ourselves, don't we? Yeah, emotions. <laughs> they do what they do. It's so important to let them move, give them the room and space. So let's let's uh, move to the second exercise. But before we do, we're going to give ourselves a little space to move. So I'm going to invite you to stand up. Especially for those of us who sit in chairs a lot at, when we're working, it's so important to take breaks, to stand up and just stretch. Ah, move your body around. Those of you who don't know, I'm also a yoga and dance teacher too. So <laughs> you like my squeaky floors? <laughs> it's a true cabin. Mm, big stretch, little shaking, <sighs> a little sound again, and just kind of take a moment to pause, okay? Whatever that means to you, just pause. For me, I can hear the rain on the rooftop. Listen to the sounds in your room and your space and pause. Ah, <sighs> great. Reset. So important. Reset. Reset. All right. Here's another. Actually, this is something I made earlier this year. Oh, it's got a backside. That's the back. <laughs> Here's the front. This is something I made this year. It's kind of inspired by Georgia. Of course, the colors are very bright. She, she didn't necessarily do neon like this, but I really like crystals, so I did the crystal thing. This is something here. Isn't that interesting? Something very internal wanting to be expressed external perhaps or like an internal external this also reminds me of a prayer wheel or prayer flag or a dream catcher yeah a dream catcher that's what it looks like maybe so this is kind of inspired by georgia too especially with the way she would do these lines she would do these kinds of lines up against other lines like that. So now we're going to go for the color and we're going to get out our natural supplies. So this is where I'm going to get my pastels out. And then we'll do paint after this. Isn't this fun? I get to do different medium today, different media, different mediums. Look at that cool leaf. Now, this is nothing compared to some of the bigger ones. I just didn't feel like walking too far to get the giant ones. Some of them are just, they're huge up here. These huge maple trees, with these huge leaves, but it's a pretty good size one too, isn't it? I got a couple of them. I got a little bit smaller one, a bigger one. So fall, fall is happening. This is when we are shown by nature that it's time to shed, it's time to release, it's time to slow down a little bit, go within a little bit, getting ready for the winter months where we really are going to be needing to stay warm. Of course, a lot of you who are watching this might be in Florida, and it'll still be pretty warm down there in the winter, but winter is coming. <laughs> And here we are in fall, harvest time, time to be grateful for all that has been created through the summer, for all that has grown, for all that bounty that we have um, given to ourselves, really. Everything that, that you've done this year, that you've grown, that you've learned, perhaps, some of the themes of, of what it is that you've found out about yourself might come to mind right now when we're thinking about this time of year. Maybe you have a garden and you are harvesting right now. You're actually getting the fruits of your labor and you're, you're making some food. So we're just thinking about these concepts and, and, and letting those thoughts and emotions inform this next piece. 
So I think I'm going to say, all right, well, maybe we could look at these colors. And so maybe the, the objects that you found outside or that you're looking at outside are quite different than mine. And maybe their colors are very different. Maybe you've chosen to focus on some bright flowers or something, or who knows? So whatever you've got going on, your colors are probably going to be a little different than mine. And I may choose different colors than what I say here, see here, something that strikes me as a different contrast or mood. But now we're going to play with texture and color. And let it be kind of abstract. So we're looking at the natural world, but, but we're taking those forms and shapes and we're not trying to make them exact but we're allowing them to be echoes of what we see that express a feeling that we're having, much like Georgia did. So when you're ready, staring at that blank piece of paper again, don't worry about what it's going to look like. We're not planning it and saying, oh, well, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this, although you might have some ideas coming. Try to hold them at bay for a moment. And we're just going to breathe and see what arises from inside you as you gaze upon these pieces of nature that you've brought inside. And you have your colors handy. And we're just going to start to have a relationships happen between the objects that you see and the shapes that you see. You can even zoom in, you know, and really see, oh, it's got this line and maybe magnify that line across. Maybe I'll do that with some of these and just think of it as a, a very abstract collage you're making here, just playing with line and shape, form, let it come. Just let it come and color it in if you want. Maybe it makes you feel something while you're doing it. What does it feel like, the color that you chose? What does it remind you of? Be thinking about that as you're creating. What is this reminding me of? Not necessarily, oh, I have to get this image right and make it look a certain way, but as my hand is just naturally moving across, as I'm allowing myself to let go of any outcome and just play and see how the forms work together. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see what happens when we do this. We're just going to see what happens. I'm not going to prejudge or anything. I need to get this paper off of here. Hmm. Yeah. Just playing with shape, line, form. Not trying to be Georgia O'Keeffe. We're just playing. <laughs> Mm, just let it flow and see what happens. See how they play with each other, these shapes, these forms. Maybe there's a story that starts to happen that's very unexpected. <sighs> it's maybe just about something you weren't really aware of before, but it's an insight that happens. Some kind of insightful expression or energy that's wanting to come through for you just by following the moment. What's coming through now? What's coming through now? This is about being present. Give it some space. Let it be raw. That's why I like pastels, because it's got a grainy texture to it, and it can be moved around. And 
You can use different colors over top of the pastels to change the color a little bit and just very much about playing, no attachment to anything supposed to be any particular way. Just coloring and a moving line and shape around. See where it takes you. See where it goes. Let your art take you somewhere. Let your art take you somewhere. Into a feeling or sense of being. <laughs> Just let it come out, whatever it is. See what happens. You know, maybe somebody else would say, oh, that does shouldn't go there, or that just should, don't worry about that critic. There's no shoulds here. No shoulds. Don't give it a second thought. This is good practice for you in life when we have all these shoulds coming at us to just, nope, I'm just going to trust myself here. I'm just going to trust myself. Isn't that a nice place to be when we can trust ourselves? Mm-hmm. Takes a lot of courage to do that, doesn't it? I think George O'Keefe would agree. It's a lot of courage to do it your way. I mean, she was a rebel. You know, she went out there, did it her way. Somebody's called the mother of modernism. You got to be brave. Because <laughs> there was a lot coming up against her. Telling her, you can't do that. Who do you think you are? If she would have listened to them, we would not have her art. And I think we need it. I know I did. I do. Yeah, even if you make a mistake, make it part of the thing. Sheesh, I'm surprising myself here. <laughs> I think based on what I'm talking about, some, some new things are coming through here that I would not have expected. So what are the repeating patterns that are starting to happen? Let's see what happens there. I'm also bringing in something that I didn't bring inside, but is very much out there in this landscape, which is the rocks, these huge rocks here. And they're like this gray color, kind of grayish brownish. Without those rocks, we'd be washing away here, <laughs> all this water. Hmm, probably have about just a little bit of time left to go into the painting part here in a minute. So let's take another minute to just Get to wherever you can get to with this. You can always come back to it. Remember, this is just about process and play, not about making a perfect design or image per se right now. Maybe when you come back to it, you can polish it up and if you're feeling like it. All right. Mm. 
Yeah. So I'm looking at the time. It looks like we've got 10 minutes. So let's switch some gears here. We can come back to this. I've got stuff flying everywhere. You know it's good art when it gets messy. <laughs> All right. Here's what came through on that level with the pastels and a little bit of charcoal. So I may come back and put some more gray in here. We've got all this gray happening all around. Isn't that neat behind me in the window with all those leaves happening? So cool. Maybe I'll put some of those patterns in here too. Okay, we're gonna flip it and go to the paints. Different mediums expresses things a little bit differently. I don't even know if I brought this one in. Maybe I'll use, the, do some wood in this one. So you may, ho hopefully you've already got your paints prepared, but if not, you can pause and, and come back. I've got to get my water, which I have over here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to take a little pause and reset. This is what is so good to do throughout the day whenever you're doing anything in life is to take a pause and reset. So my hands are messy, so I'm just going to not touch my clothes. <laughs> mm, just reset. Take a breath. Grounding is important. Feel your feet down on the ground and maybe even say a little mantra to yourself. I'm allowing whatever wants to come through to come through right now. And we're going to go for it. And you may feel like just getting right into your paints or you might want to do a little Shape making first and then paint into that. Shape making meaning I'm going to use a little bit of a pencil and make some shapes here. And then I'm going to paint that in. I just love this, this shape. So I'm going to bring that in here. I'm not going to make it exact. We're just bringing in some shapes. Feeling your emotions as you do this, bring them in. Maybe there's something you really liked from the last one and you wanna emulate that with some paint. And see how that happens. So if you're new to watercolor, you can put water on the brush put it on the paper and then get the paint and put it on, or you can do it this way and just go straight in here with the water and then lay that on, just move it around. Let it flow. See what wants to be expressed, what shapes and forms have been coming through for you to express today. And ride the wave of your breath. So important to breathe. Just be centered while you create. trust trust your process as you're creating Just let some expressive 
movements take shape. Maybe it's just about a mood you want to convey. Just let that mood come through. You know, when I look at this piece of wood, it kind of evokes, it invokes, evokes a mood in me. And I'm just interested in that right now. Just feeling that mood. The mood of it. Remember that question in the beginning, you know, when you're looking at art, how does it make you, when you're looking at nature, how does it make you feel? When you're gazing or connecting or feeling, just feeling nature. How does it make you feel? Can you express that right now? Just for yourself. (sighs) Take those breaths as you do. Maybe it's not even just nature. Maybe it's also just how do my surroundings make me feel? You know, Georgia, when she was living in the city, really convey the mood of the city and how she felt in it, her surroundings. Those graphic images of the city, remember? Maybe you're in the city. Maybe you wanna bring the city into your moody expression. All right. So, I think we've just got a little bit more time left today for the video. Of course, you can always come back and just do this as long as you want and long as you have time for. Highly recommend you do so. I will. I wouldn't call this finished, but I'm going to show you what moods were coming through for me and what shapes and what forms. So I'm sure I'll continue to play with that today. I'm going to go ahead and close this class for us now because we're at time. And just thank you for showing up for yourself and being open and listening. And I hope that you've enjoyed the experience of getting to know Georgia O'Keefe a little bit more through my eyes, at least, and how I see her art as a healing art, and it has really been an inspiration in my life, and her life is an inspiration to my life too. So sending you all so much gratitude, keep making, keep creating, keep going, keep flowing, keep expressing, and much gratitude for the Atlantic Center for the Arts, and we'd love for you to share with us uh, whatever you're creating and reach out, check check out the Atlantic Center for the Arts on Facebook and of course their website too. So thank you so much. Oh, and you can find me at rachelchase.com. Bye for now.